It's a beautiful afternoon. Hardly a breeze. And uh, I've got the uh, UMX Radian out here. I fly with this Futaba 10 CHP. I'm going to do a little demo on initializing AS3X, checking your elevator trim, and then uh, showing a flight on how it, how it, a little demo on how it flies. When everything's adjusted right, when the CG is right and trim is about right and decollage is right, the thing is just a beautiful little plane. Anyway, it's just a uh, beautiful day here today. A few clouds, hardly a breath of a breeze, and well, about 73 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, let's check to make sure the controls are working. Yep, so AS3X is working. The initial, or is, everything is initialized. And so now, I've got the battery compartment hogged out in the back here, so I can actually get the CG to the neutral point, or sweet spot as we call it. See somebody's having fun full, with a full scale plane up there. So there, I've got the battery buried in the compartment. In the back there and right at that point on my plane that's about a 32 millimeter CG or thereabouts and uh, let's see here you can see that the elevator is pretty much uh, just about dead level with a stab well here's a shot from the rear I'm going to show you how much rudder throw I've got. It needs lots of rudder throw for good performance because you don't have a motor to give you uh, airflow over the tail. And when you're flying only a couple of knots above stall, which is your best uh, best glide, um, you don't have a lot of rudder authority. So it's nice to have enough so that you can do quick turns and and you know core a small thermal. And, uh, but then you run some expo on it, which will uh, mellow it out around center. Now, take a look at the uh, elevator throw. And that's for, that's what I've got for elevator. Which is quite a bit. On a, on a little plane like this, but there again, you need that for quick maneuvers and such things because you don't have all the airflow over the tail like we do with a power plane and then just run some expo to mellow it out around center that way you don't have to grope for some switch to flip rates when you need to it's just all right there you get the precision around center but you've got to throw when you need it and here just a, a gentle toss at about half throttle and off it goes And you can see the E-Flight uh, 45C gives it almost vertical climb. Power off. It's flying hands off. The thing is, I've got the uh, rudder maxed out. I've got it, got it all the way in on the push on the. Uh, on the control horn, so I've got max rudder throw. You need that because uh, you need a lot of rudder when you don't have a motor running and you're flying just a few knots above stall. You don't have a lot of rudder authority. You know the power plane, even when you're, you know, stalled. If you've got the throttle wide open, you got you've got some prop wash over the tail, which helps out. Don't have that here. So to make the tight turns, you need that. And I've also got the elevator just about maxed out. But, having all that control, you don't want to have jerky controls because jerky movements and sudden and overextending the controls just ruins your glide. And I don't like dual rates because it's a switch you got to remember to flip. 
and uh, I use Expo instead. Well, most everything full scale has Expo. Your car does. Uh, variable ratio power steering is simply another name for Expo. Um, and most full scale aircraft have some form of mechanical exponential just in the in the way the the control horns and and everything works if it's a cable and pulley plane and most computer control flight systems give you some form of that as well so most everything you use in the real world has expo you ever driven a go-kart uh, you'll know how fa how hard it is to drive them fast that's because they don't have expo they got linear steering so you get you get going 30 40 miles an hour and the steering gets really touchy but uh, with the variable ratio power steering you get smooth control but yet when you crank the wheel all the way you get the tight steering you need for parking well it's the same for for an airplane when you run some expo you get all of that control authority when you need it in an emergency without having to remember to flip a switch and grope for that while you're trying to save your airplane but the controls are mellow and, and uh, precise around center. And so I, uh, way back when, it was in the well, late 70s, early 80s, back at the beginning of, of radios that had dual rates and expo switches and stuff, stuff, I remember watching a guy stuff a really nice quarter scale um, aerobatic plane and it was back when quarter scale planes were kind of uncommon. And I watched him stuff it on, on landing. And he made the comment, I forgot to switch rates. And at that time, I was not flying with a fancy radio that did that. Back then, those particular features, Expo and dual rates, were considered real fancy. And I uh, told myself right then and there, and when I upgraded my radio, I was going to probably use Expo most of the time, unless I found that I'm flying an aircraft that just, you know, needs, has to have dual rates for some reason. But, being able to run, get all the throw, is a good thing in a glider, because there again, like I said before, without a motor, there's times when you need all the elevator and all the rudder you got. But, you still want to be nice and smooth and fluid when you're flying normally. And that's where Expo comes into play. See, if I want to, I can make it do that. And that was a power-off J-turn. So, you know, I've got enough rudder authority and elevator authority that even in a, in a glide, I can... Uh, do a sudden maneuver if I need to. Now we're going to do, we're going to demonstrate the dive test to check for CG. And the way you do that is you do a power off and you uh, dive it at a pretty steep angle 45 50 degrees or more and then you go hands off in the dive and you watch and see what the plane does if it pulls out slightly by itself the CG is just slightly forward pretty good for general flying around if it air caught some lift if the CG, if the plane continues on the dive path without pulling out, then the CG is at the neutral point, which is highest efficiency, best sensitivity to lift, indicates lift best, and and uh, has the least drag. But it makes for a little busier flight because the airplane doesn't have any natural tendency to pull out of a dive. So here we go. Hands off. See, it just pulled out a little bit by itself. That's about uh, what I like. I like my aircraft very close to neutral. Unless I'm flying in a lot of wind or something and need the, uh, need the wind penetration. Power off again. 
You notice when I go from power on to power off, the plane just glides. Doesn't uh, doesn't pitch up when I go power on, and those doesn't fall out of the fall like a rock when I go power off. I'll show that when I come by this time. I'm going to go hands off in the glide. There's hands off except for rudder. And now I'm just going to nail the throttle. You see, it just keeps flying. It doesn't do anything weird. And notice that my turns can be kind of flat too. Um, you notice it's not dropping the nose and losing a bunch of altitude in the turns. If, um, and you notice it's not porpoising. If yours is porpoising, and that means you've got too much up elevator trim, usually caused by having too forward a CG, but decollage problems can cause that too if the horizontal stab isn't aligned with the wing properly. And there's been a few reports of that with this plane. It's one of the problems with small foam planes is that half a millimeter of misalignment matters and it's really hard to make small foam planes super accurate so sometimes you'll find one that's a little different and if you happen to have a decollage problem it's really frustrating to tune your aircraft because the symptoms of decollage being off are pretty much the same as having the CG off um, so if you, if you uh, have one of these and and you've got the CG set to the factory recommended spot around 31 millimeters or so. That's usually where neutral handling is on the plane, like you saw in the dive test where it just kind of dives and doesn't pull out. If you've got the CG set there and your plane acts weird, you know, like it like it balloons under power and dives when you've cut the power and it, and it uh, uh, porpoises and glide, even when you have the CG where it should be and then you find that you have to have a lot of elevator trim of some form up or whatever then that's a good sign that the decollage is probably off on your particular plane <coughs> there is a dive test to check decollage that removes CG from the equation you take the plane up really high but you have to have the elevator neutral completely neutral with respect to the stab then you dive it straight down and watch. If it, uh, you know, if the decollage is right, it should just keep diving. If it uh, pulls out or tucks to the belly, then the decollage is off. And, and uh, yeah, you can fix that by bending the foam a little bit, retaping it, the tail section. Uh, it's pretty thin back there. Uh, but you need to have that pretty close before you start doing much of anything else. Usually with balsa ships and you don't worry much about that because kits are pretty good and ARFs nowadays are pretty good and it's pretty rare that you find uh, decollage problems on on balsa planes from reputable companies. But on these foamies sometimes it happens it's because of the nature of, of uh, manufacturing variability. Anyway, you can see how it how it uh, indicates every little teeny air current. You can see the tail wiggle, the wings wiggle. That's a good thing. That's a very good sign. That's what a that's what a thermal duration sailplane is supposed to do. It's supposed to be very sensitive to every little updraft and downdraft. I found some sink over there. That's the other thing, is that wherever there's lift, uh, you'll find sink not too far away from it. Because wherever the air is going up, well, a little ways away, it's going down. And you can figure out what the plane is doing by watching it. Um, if you're gliding along and all of a sudden the wing tips up and the plane veers and banks sharply, <laughs> that means <coughs> you just um, got bounced off a thermal, a rising column of air. 
and what you want to do is turn into that. If the plane uh, suddenly the right wing tips up and the plane goes left, you want to hurry up and turn right and try to get back in that column of lift. And if all of a sudden the, uh, the nose pitches up, you just entered rising lift. And if all of a sudden the nose pitches down, you just uh, exited the rising column of, of air. So you can get used to how the plane behaves and how it looks. And you can tell, that's how you read your airplane, uh, airframe, and you tell uh, what it's doing up there. And once you get good at it, you can, uh, you know, circle in the lift and do what they call coring a thermal. Where you stay right in the in the in the main updraft and you just ride it all the way uphill. That takes talent and uh, it's it's you know it takes practice. It's not something you get used to immediately. I'm still not very good at it. I've been I'm pretty new to sailplanes. I've been flying RC for over 30 years, but but I've only been flying sailplanes for for about two. And I only I only got two sailplanes, the Radian Pro, the big two meter, and this little guy. I'm I think I'm hearing hearing the sound of an AT6 engine again. Sounds like a large radial. I get a lot of full-scale action over here because I'm just outside the, uh, the controlled airspace of Minneapolis-St. Paul. So a lot of people come out here to do aerobatic practice. You know, a lot of instructors come out here to show, to teach their students things like power, you know, power off uh, recovery and and stall recovery and other things like that. And a lot of the Warbird guys come out here and practice flying around for for air shows because it's just outside of the controlled airspace of the city. You might even see some uh, Reno racers here once in a while. See a P-51 cruising by at you know 450 plus. I've seen B-29s fly over, seen a B-29, B-24, one of only two B-24s left flying as a matter of fact. And he's having fun over there with that, with that plane, I can hear his engine. see, what does my timer say? Timer says I've been up for 16 minutes and I've got four and a half minutes motor on. So, oh, there it went into pulse, motor pulse. So I need to set my timer a little lower. <laughs> 